Well, howdy, folks. As you can see, maybe you know, maybe you don't know, I am inside the Guggen House, the MTB crib kitchen. Well, Lunkers TV and I were planning on going fishing today until we woke up. It was 50 degrees and 30 to 40 mile an hour winds. Now, most of you guys might be thinking, Flair, that's not that bad. You can go catch fish in that, right? You're right. I totally 110% could go catch fish. Uh, well, I, I couldn't guarantee I could catch fish, but I, I would have the shot of catching fish. It's basically what I'm saying is that it is possible to catch fish in those conditions, but have you guys ever heard, basically, have you ever watched a Peric video? Just like any video in general, you've probably heard the absurd wind noise that it is that are in his videos. That is what you would get with today's video, and I don't think you guys want that. Personally, I absolutely cannot stand wind noise, and I know you guys say, oh, you just wear a mic and have a, yeah, I do, and it doesn't matter. 40, 40 mile an hour wind, I don't care what mic you have, it does not matter. So, this is a video that I wanted to make last week, two weeks ago, and I just haven't had the chance. I've been traveling around, I haven't been home at all, and now I'm in Texas, and I figured this would be a good time to make this video. It's a little bit late. I checked last year, and I made this like March 5th, and now it's like, you know, beginning of April, so it is a little bit late, and that is my top five spring bass fishing lures. Now, this is I, I don't want to call it just just the spring lures because really a spring the spring a spring the spring is broken down into three different time areas. But before I get into this, here is a flare hat. This is uh, this is the hat that you guys always see me wear. I'm going to be doing a special contest for the just the month of April. If you buy a flare hat or a flare shirt or a flare hoodie you will automatically be entered to win a $250 favorite rod. That's just my way of giving back to you guys to support me. I, it literally means the world when I see pictures on Instagram and Twitter of you guys wearing, you know, the hats and the shirts and everything like that. It really means means the world to me. So I want to kind of give back to you guys, give you guys an opportunity to win a, uh, a pretty sick rod. It's a $250 Rush favorite rod. That's what I'm going to be giving away. It's going to end April 30th. So if you guys want it, make sure you check the link down below um, and go pick one up and really appreciate the sport, guys. It, it really does mean a ton. So anyways, what I was saying is about the three categories. It's pre-spawn, spawn, and post-spawn. That is what basically encompasses spring. And so there's really five baits for each. There's five pre-spawn baits, five spawn baits, and five post-spawn baits. And I don't want to make this video like 37 minutes long. And so I'm pretty much gonna just touch base on pre-spawn, and that's basically about it. That doesn't mean you can't pick up these lures and throw them during the spawn or post-spawn and not catch fish and catch fish, whatever. You can definitely catch fish on basically any time of year on any of these, but these are my favorite. These are my favorite. The other thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to do two more things. You guys ready? I know you guys are probably so sick of hearing me talk right now. Two things. One, I'm going to leave the, the rod, the reel, the line that I would use for each of these baits down in the description. So again, not to make this a 37 minute long video, I'm going to do that. So if you guys want to know what rod, what reel, what line I would use for each and every one of these baits I talk about, everything will be linked down below. Lastly, I'm going to go over my top five favorite, but I'm also going to mention some alternatives, some, some baits that maybe you're not comfortable with a chatterbait and you're more of a spinnerbait guy. And I'll talk about that just a little bit. So I'm going to quit talking. I hate, I, I wouldn't say I hate these videos because I do. I love talking to you guys and I love teaching, but I know how boring I am just to listen to talk. So anyways, I'm going to go through and it's going to go in basically time order. So like, let's say the, the ice just thawed, that's the first bit I'm going to start with. And as the water kind of heats up, I'm going to kind of make my way down the line. Also, if you want to check out last year's top five spring baits, I'll leave that down below as well. It's not exactly the same, but it's going to be pretty dang close. All right, let's do this. The number one bait, when the ice thaws, when it's cold water, when the fishing is slow, hands down is a little jerk bait. Now, there's different colors, there's different sizes, there's different depths. I use like a little shallow one, kind of like this. And as far as colors go, how I determine colors on a jerk bait is if it's sunny, I use something chrome or gold, something that gives a little bit of a flash. And if it's cloudy, then I'll use something that's more colored, something that's more white um, or translucent. And the same thing, if it's clear water, use something like translucent, kind of like this. And if it's dirty water, you don't really want to throw jerk baits that much in dirty water, but if it's maybe a little bit stained, use like a bone color, something that kind of stands out a little bit. Um, those are pretty much my go-to jerkbait conditions. I, I, I really just throw them in clear, clear cold water is really what all I throw jerkbaits in. You can throw them in different situations than that. That's just what I personally enjoy. 
Next down the line, this is when the water starts to heat up a little bit more. Maybe the grass is starting to grow up if you guys are in a grass lake. I like throwing a lipless crankbait. So this is this is a red one. Now for some for some odd reason, red seems to just absolutely kill it for me in the spring. See, basically the only time that I can catch fish on a red lipless, and I, I, I say this as in I'm in Nebraska. I mean, I'm in Texas now and it's probably gonna be different this year, but as far as when I grew up from the time I was like eight years old to now, how I've been fishing every single year, is a red lipless crankbait. Now you can use like a shad one or a gold one. Um, colors just, it's really just personal preference, just try it out. Lipless crankbaits for some reason just absolutely slay in the spring. I don't know what it is. Um, you can catch them in the summer and in the fall on them, but in the spring I always have a lipless crankbait tied on. So next, now the water is even warmer. Now the fish maybe are getting a little bit shallow. They're thinking about spawning. They may be feeding a little bit. That is when you guys know, and I throw this year round, so I don't, this shouldn't be a surprise, but it's gonna be a bladed jig of some sort, a chatterbait, a bladed jig, something with like a little swim bait on it, um, something with, you know, I could throw something else on the back of this, like a, like a little fluke or something along those lines. And as far as colors go, chatterbait, I keep it super simple. If it's dirty water, I throw black and blue. If it's spring and it's clear water, I throw a bluegill color, like a, like a green pumpkin. For some reason, bass just hate bluegills in the spring. They eat them and they protect their, their little beds from them. So I always throw like a green pumpkin in the spring. Again, you can throw these colors all year round, but this is just, I'm just telling you guys exactly what I like to do. And then lastly is like a white, like a shad. So if you guys know there's crappie, a lot of crappie in your lake, a lot of shad, uh, I like throwing a white. And that's basically white, white and chartreuse. If the water's a little bit dirty, white and chartreuse. Um, or a little bit stained, but again, if it's dirty water, I stick with a black and blue with like a swim bait on the back. And that's just basically, I throw that when the fish, when I think the fish are gonna be moving up, they're getting shallower, maybe the water temperature is above 50 degrees or so. That's when I throw that an alternative. I have two alternatives to, to the moving bait category uh, that I'm talking about right now. And one is a spinner bait. You guys have seen in my last video, I was throwing a spinner bait and uh, it absolutely crushed it. Now, personally, I prefer chatter baits over spinner baits. But there are days when it, maybe it's a little bit windy and uh, I just, I kind of have that gut feeling, maybe if it's cloudy and windy, that like a spinnerbait is going to really crush it. So spinnerbait. Another thing that you can throw is something like this, something like a little shallow crankbait, whether it's a square bill, um, a wake bait, anything like that, anything that moves shallow, that just, that imitates a bluegill or a shad, any type of bait fish that a bass would want to eat is essentially all you're doing in the spring is you're, you're imitating whatever the heck they are going to eat when they move up shallow and they start thinking about making their beds. Colors for, for crankbaits, uh, for like, you know, square bills. If it's dirty, I do chartreuse black back. If it's more clear or like a little bit stained, I do like a white, white and chartreuse, or sometimes I'll throw a bluegill color. That's pretty much the only time I throw a bluegill crankbait, like a bluegill square bill is in the spring. Again, I like to stick to bluegill stuff in the spring because bluegills move up and spawn and bass move up and spawn and they're just all everywhere. So those are pretty much all the moving baits that I use in the spring, I would say pre-spawn. And then if the bass are probably like they would be today where a cold front came through, they're gonna be a little bit more finicky. Uh, there's two baits that I like to go with in the spring, and this is kind of a stand, I mean, this is kind of what I throw year round when it's tough, but one, one, one lure that I throw in, and this is a cold water lure as well, so like if you're throwing that jerk bait and it starts to slow down as a jig, something like that, just, just a regular flipping jig, or if it really is tough, you can go to something like that, which is a, more of a finesse jig. As far as colors go, I'm a, I'm a black and blue dude when it comes to when it comes to jigs. For some reason, I just love black and blue. But in the spring, again, I like that bluegill color, that little that little watermelon green pumpkin bluegill color. Um, you can throw a craw on the back of that. You can throw a little little swim bait, little twister tail. You can also do a swim jig. That's one thing I didn't mention. Next to the chatter baits and, and spinner baits and crank baits is a swim jig. Basically, the only time I throw a swim jig is in the spring. For some reason, I just like. I feel like once the ice melts, I get this itch to like throw baits that I never throw, and then I throw a, a, a swim jig and I catch fish, and I think it's the coolest thing ever. And then I grab a chatter bait, and then the rest of the year I throw a chatter bait. Anyways, now I'm rambling. So a jig, a jig is just like flipping trees. I notice whenever a cold front comes in, bass usually kind of hunker up. They sit tight to trees. They sit tight to cover. They don't really feed a whole lot. They kind of get locked jaws. Some people say you pitch a jig in front of their face, they're gonna eat it. Very lastly, is that a word? Very lastly is a shaky head worm. Now you could do a drop shot, you could do a Ned rig. Actually, I don't know why I didn't grab that. A Ned rig, a little teeny tiny Ned rig. That's probably like the number one spring bass fishing lure of all time, as far as numbers goes. Not size, numbers. If you're trying to catch a, a ton of flare fish, a ton of flare fish, a Ned rig is the way to go. That's exactly what you need to be throwing. But if you wanna catch a little bit larger fish, maybe you're in Texas, you're going after some, some true brutes, you wanna throw something bigger like a, like a big shaky head. 
something along those lines. I don't know why I didn't bring out a Ned Rig. Hopefully you guys know what a Ned Rig is. Basically it's like a Senko that's that big on a jig head. That's really all it is. That bait right there catches, ooh, I don't even know how to, I don't even know how to like, I can't even put into perspective how many fish that, that bait will catch. Like I said, they're not gonna be big. They're gonna be little babies, but you're gonna catch a whole lot. So maybe if you're having a tough day of fishing and you just wanna catch some fish, tie on Ned Rig. So guys, that's pretty much all I've got. I talked a million miles an hour. I'm gonna fill the description with so much freaking info. So if you guys got lost, if you got bored, I don't blame you. If you just, if you like didn't, like I said, if you didn't really follow along and you wanna just kinda, you know, go back, hopefully you guys took notes. Maybe you paused and took notes. I always do that when I'm watching YouTube videos. I always just take a little bit, take a little bit of notes. Everything will be down in the description. The rods, the reels, the line, the lures. I'm gonna leave links to a bunch of these baits. Everything that you guys need. I really wanna help you guys go catch fish. I encourage you guys, especially if you're new to bass fishing to get out in the spring trust me it is the best time to go fishing get out there right now go fishing go support me i will leave this the link to this hat and all the shirts and everything down below again end of it until the end of april as long as you make an order of a shirt a hat or hoodie i will enter you and, and it's just going to be random so you don't have to it doesn't matter if you spend a thousand dollars on the website or five dollars on the website it doesn't matter you you will be entered to win a $250 combo. So again, thank you guys so much for the support. I promise the next video you'll see will be fishing. I'm going to go fishing for the next like six days straight. Weather's going to be perfect. Thank you guys so much for watching and peace. Too many thoughts on my mind, I can't sleep at night, so I just keep writing. I don't need no help, I don't need opinions, so don't waste my time then. I just been living online, my city don't show me no love and that's fine.